Good morning, everyone. Today we are starting with grade nine computer application. In grade eight, we already had been introduced to Java programming. Now, as this is our first class in grade nine, uh, we are starting with Java programming values and data types. Now, uh, this chap, you all know, in, in grade eight we had started with like uh, whatever the instructions you want to put it in the program has to be in a class. So you know what is class, what is function. Now, what, how to store a particular value is something that we'll be learning in this uh, chapter. And for the values, what is the appropriate data type? Now, what do you mean by data type over here? Data type is something uh, where, like for example, if I'm storing a number five, how will the computer recognize that this five is a number which it has to be stored. So there are n number of data types that we'll be using over here in this chapter and getting introduced to it. Now, what is program? Program when you're writing is basically a set of statements. When you start with the curly brackets, you can see there are n number of statements that you write, okay? Now each statement of a computer program is formed by using different words. Now, what are these words? These are the words which the computer can understand. Okay, like I, I can just say, you know, uh, display my name and the computer will display. There is a proper way or, you know, for example, I have to give system dot out dot print ln and then the computer understands, okay, it has to print something. So when I am giving such instructions, in the language which the computer understand, each and every word is considered as a token. So each token, when you're making a token, is basically formed by using valid characters of computer language in which the program is written. I cannot just write it in English, anything, you know, the way how I'm talking right now. It has to be in the language which the computer understands. So, uh, here, the token is basically a set of characters. Now, what does the character has? It has got letters, digits, operators, delimiters. Letters, when I say, it is capital A to Z, small a to Z. Now, I have specially specified over here, capital A to Z, small a to Z. That means in Java programming, it is case sensitive. When I type a capital A, it has got a different meaning in the computer language and small a has got a different. So it's case sensitive. Example, when you're writing system, system not out dot print ln. This is the function which we have used in grade eight also. So system S has to be capital. You cannot write small. If you write small, it will give you an error message saying that it is not understanding. So in that case, you have to use the way how it has been stored in the system. So system S has to be capital, other all letter has to be small. So it is case sensitive. When you're using for class name, function name, or any other places, you have to be very particular about the case. So all the letters that we have from A to Z is used in Java programming. Only the thing is, it is case sensitive. The next one is digits. Now, digits are used for calculations. So when you have zero to, which you have it from zero to nine, it could be a combination of it, like for 11, 21, 31, you know, any number which you can use for calculations and all. That is stored in digits. You have operators. Now, what is this operators? Operators are the special sign. Special sign or symbols used for performing operations in Java program. Uh, example, plus, minus. When I want to do any mathematical calculation, I have to use some special sign or the symbol which the computer can understand, okay? Uh, and it will help you in the programming part. 
Now, there are three types of operators, arithmetic operator, logical operator, and relational operator. Arithmetic operator, like plus, minus, multiply, simple calculations that you do, it comes in the arithmetic operator. You can see the star sign that is used for multiplication. The slash used for division. Uh, when you put the, div uh, and the percentage also is for division. Now, how is it different? The slash sign gives you the quotient, whereas the percentage sign gives you the remainder. So like if I divide a number, whatever would be the quotient, I'll be able to see it with the help of slash sign. But if I want to know the remainder, example, if I divide a particular number, or let's say I, if I divide any even number with two, I should get this uh, and remainder as zero. So over there, I'll be using the percentage sign because I want to check whether I'm getting the answer or the remainder as zero. So I'll be using the arithmetic operator over there. You have logical operators, that is and or not. And is used when you have both the conditions to check. Like I have got two conditions and I want to see that both the conditions are true. So I'll be using the and operator. The next, that is two lines, that is for or. So here you can check whether out of the two, any one condition is also true, it will display you the output. Not is used when you want to see that the condition is not true, then only it will do. Now all these three will give you the answer basically in true or false way. If both the conditions are true, then it will perform. If either of the condition is true, then it will perform. Or not, if it is not true, then it will perform. So these all three are known as logical operators. The next one is the relational operator. That is less than, less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to. And you can see two equal to. That is called as equal to. That is, it is checking whether both the things are exactly the same or not. For example, you two friends are there. The first friend is in eight, you are also, uh, sorry, in nine, you are also in nine. The friend is in A division, you are also in A division. So exactly the same. If both the things are same, then it is true. And whatever the function has to perform, it will do that. The next one is not equal to. So it will check if it is not equal to, the performance will be taking place. Then there are certain delimiters that we'll be using. Now, what are delimiters? They are actually the special characters. There are n number of characters, but you cannot just use it anything. There are certain characters, special characters that you'll be using, and it has got a specific purpose. Let's say braces, the round brackets. Uh, you remember when you use system dot out dot print ln, you open it with a bracket, or you write public static void main, you open it with a bracket. Okay, so these brackets are used with it. Now, when you have public class, you create a class, you open it with a curly bracket, and in the end, you close it with a curly bracket. So it is used over there. That is to open a class, open a function, open uh, or close a class, close a function. This can be done with the curly brackets. Then you can see two box brackets. They are actually used in array programs, which we'll be doing in 10 standard. The next one is punctuation mark. Now, uh, comma, uh, dot, semicolon. Semicolon, I think you all must be remembering. System dot out dot print ln, whatever you put in the round bracket, at the end you put a semicolon. Or, uh, yeah, semicolon. So that is basically to stop over there of the, the statement gets complete and you put it. It's almost like a full stop how you use in your normal English. So same thing over here. Mm, comma and all you'll be using for, uh, let's say, when you are dealing with numbers and you are storing it in data types and all. As I explained, I'll show you how exactly it is used. So there you'll be using dot. If you see, you can, uh, you remember system dot out dot. So, so at such places where you're using the function, many a times you use the dot sign over there. So token is defined as each individual component of Java program that carries some meaning. I just randomly cannot type anything and expect that the computer will understand or the program will get executed. And 
when you go according to the language or the tokens proper tokens used then it in a uh, and then it start taking active part in the program execution now there are different types of tokens when i say character sets we have already discussed character sets like uh, you have numbers letters special characters and all now with the help of these character sets you can perform with literals identifiers assignment operators punctuators separators keywords now these all words are new to you so let's go one by one the first one literal now what is literal literal is a constant that remains fixed throughout the discussion of a program uh now let's say uh i have number 15 Fifteen is a constant, or uh, let's say uh, I have got fifty out of hundred. So this fifty is constant. You, I cannot like suddenly today I have got fifty and tomorrow in that paper it would be fifty one. It's nothing like that. Okay, it will remain constant. That in my essay two I have got fifty out of hundred. So this. Fifty is a constant that remains fixed throughout the discussion of the program. Now, this fifty, I have, I will be storing it in a variable. You can use the numbers in the beginning, but when you have big programs and all, basically what happens, you know, the computer does not understand your this numbers. So, we allocate memory in the computer with the help of the variables so the it's like i'm living in a house so this house has got a name maybe a2 or i put my my name i'm just saying outside so that name is the variable we all are staying inside now if i sell my house some other person will come and will be staying over there the person who stays is a constant and the name which is outside is the variable so this variable can change as the person changes or you know some other person comes the other person would be a name would be assigned so that is known as a variable it's a allocated memory this a2 is fixed and the names of the people or the names on the door would be changing so this is called as a the names which are changing are the variables and the flat a2 is fixed so that is the literal there are various types of literals in java integer literal real literal character string boolean and null now when i say literal it's a value so this value is exactly what based on it i'll be storing it in the variable like uh, as i say integer it's a number real again it's a number but in a different form character letters that, that's what i come to know at this point right string an n number of letters boolean now boolean over here is something related with true and false as i showed you in the uh, logical operator and all we use the boolean that is if the condition is true or if the condition is not true or either of the condition is true so at that places you have the boolean literal then you have the null literal that is empty make it empty now integer literal when you have a whole number like for example i have got 50 it's not 50.5 it's exact 50 then i can store it as an integer literal it's a whole number it could be positive it could be negative but it comes in the category of integer literal example i have given over here 17 654 787 then you have real literals now as i said it's exact 50 so i'm storing it in integer but in case if i have got 50.5 or 50 and a half that what you say they are the fractional numbers okay so that is stored in the real number 
so here you can see it is in numbers also it is differentiating integer is getting stored in integer literal that is a whole number but then it comes to a decimal number it becomes a real literal okay example 17.8 654.34, 787.6. So these are known as the literals. Whenever you have a decimal, it is known as a real. When it's a whole, it is called as integer. Real literals are also called as floating point number. The next character literal. When you have a single letter, example, my division is A. So it's a single letter. We, I don't have a combination of A, B in my uh, school. It's A, B, that is what we have. So this A letter, I can store it in a character letter because it's a single. As soon as it becomes two letters, I cannot store it in the character letter. So a single letter or a digit, it could be a number like first row, no? So I can just put one. Now it's a digit, but used as a character because I'm not going to do any calculation for it. So when you are just storing a single letter, which could be a digit or a special symbol, you have to enclose it in single quotes. This is known as character literal. Example, I have given over here, which you can see it in single quotes. Okay. Then, now, if you have more than one character, for example, if I say M, single character, so character literal. But if I say M-A-M, -M, here it is more than one character. So, a set or group of characters enclosed within double quotes, it is known as string literal. Now, how do you differentiate between a character and a string? Character single, more than one letters, uh, sorry, a uh, single letter, it is a character literal. More than one letter, it becomes a string. Character literal is used with single quotes, whereas string literals are used with double quotes. You are not doing any calculation if you have any number also over here stored in double quotes. It would be just displayed as it is. You can do certain manipulations, which we'll be learning in the string chapter, which is in grade 10. But if you want to display something as it is, you can, and it is a number, you can just put it in double quotes. It will display as it is. Let's say for example, my phone number. I don't need to do any calculation with my phone number. It has to be exactly the same. So I can just put it in double quotes over there. Then comes the Boolean. As discussed, a Boolean literal can be either true or false. Let's say, uh, uh, I'm not going for shopping. It is firm. Okay. so. Uh, I'll give it as false or yes I'm going so it would be true in this way I can store the variable true or false in the boolean data type now if I store this true in double quotes it becomes a string where I cannot do the checking part but if I don't put the double quotes over here and want you it to be checked I'll be using the Boolean literals over here. Example, let's say false or true. Uh, let's say in the morning uh, when the teacher takes the attendance, she must be, uh, for everyone I'll keep it as false. So it will check by calling out the name, she'll check is so and so person present, then it will give true, else it will remain as false so this is known as boolean literal now there is also null literal which is actually for absence of a value you you are not initializing or you want it to be blank in the beginning it can be done with the help of null literal but this is only used for arrays or you know objects and all. object creating and all that when we learn at that time i'll show you so uh, arrays and objects and all, we use the null literals. Now comes the identifier. Uh, the first one we learned it as literals. Now literals is also called as constants. Same way 
identifiers in the identifiers we when we assign a value to it it becomes a constant so we can also call it as constant for this term now what is identifier identifier is as i uh, told you all variable is basically alloc allocating a memory in the computer so same thing over here whenever you give a name to a particular thing let's say a class name a function name an object name or a value name it is termed as identifiers identifiers is a term used for naming a block of statements by which they are identified in a program okay so sample my class name is sample so i can identify that the class name has been called over here as sample it's not necessary i can call it as grade 9 or i can call it as data or i can call it as value so whatever the name that i'm giving is termed as identifiers so they are class name could be function name could be variable name could be object name all this comes in the category of identifiers as i told you it could be for the value also when you give it for a value we call it as variables so variable is a named memory location that is used to contain a value that can change depending on the circumstance during the execution of the program like uh, i'm having a variable to store my name i have another variable to store my uh, class my student name or you know n number of things so for each and every data i'll be using a variable that is i'll giving uh, in the memory of the computer i'll be allocating a location where the value whatever i give let's say my name i'm giving i'm storing it in the variable nm so nm is the label for my name the name is getting stored in that particular area where i'm allocating the memory and the name of that particular location or area is known as a variable example let's say the value is 10 so for 10 i am storing 10 is the value which I'm storing it in the memory with the name as B. So B is the variable over here. Now, if you see over here, I have used the single equal to, that is the assignment. But if I use double equal to, that is the relational operator that is used for checking. A equals to G. Now, this is a single character, that is the character literal. The first one is a whole number, that could be an integer literal more than one characters so here it's a string where i'm giving the name for this value as nn now the term as i said equal to the term assignment refers to storing a value in a variable so when i'm having a value 10 or value g or value computer this i can store it to the specific variable with the help of the equal to sign like for example 10 i'm giving the name variable name as b and assigning this b with the value 10 with the help of the equal to sign now i uh, when i'm giving 10 g computer all these values are different one is integer literal, the other is character literal, the other is string. So all these three are different. So for this, I'll be requiring, I have given a name, which can be anything. Try to always give a meaningful name so that it becomes easy for you to understand. But this name, what value I'm storing, should be stored in a data type so that the computer understands that this is an integer or this is character or this is string. So here we'll be requiring the data type. Example, as I said, whole number. So for 10 as a whole number, the data type is int. For character literal, the data type is char. Remember it is case sensitive. Int has to be in small letter, char, small letter. String S has to be capital. So all these three are the data type. Int, char, string are the data types. B, A, N, M are the variable. 
equal to is for assignment. 10 G computer is a constant or a literal. Now, let's go to the next topic, operators. As I said, special sign or symbol used for performing operations in Java programming. We have already discussed about these three types of operators, arithmetical, logical, relational. I have also discussed about the punctuators, which I'll be using in my program. Operators I'll be using, separators we'll be using. Now comes the keywords. As discussed, the computer cannot understand anything. So whatever the name I'm giving has to be a reserve word which I want the computer to understand. Let's say, for example, I say public, class, sample. Sample is a name which I'm giving. So this name can be anything related to the program, but public has got a specific meaning. Class has got a specific meaning. When I say public, my program can be used anywhere. It's open for everyone. That is public. Class is for creating a class. And then, this class, I'm giving a name. The name could be anything. Okay. So I'm giving sample. I'm giving grade. I'm giving nine. N-I-N-E. It cannot start with numbers. So all these class, public, void, system is something which the computer understands or the program understands. So keywords are the reserve words which are preserved by the system. The system already knows about the meaning of it and has got, it knows what purpose it has to go for. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, as I said, it is case sensitive and has got special meaning, okay? We cannot use them in our names wherever we are creating name. Let's say, for example, I'm creating a class name, public class. I cannot give the class name as class with C small, C-L-A-S-S, no. It is already reserved in the system, so it won't accept it. For it, class word has got a special meaning, so it is considered as a keyword. Same way system, S capital Y S T E M, the computer understands that this is related with the system where I'll be using it for accepting a value or you know displaying a value. It has got a meaning over here. So it won't consider for me as a variable to store the word system where S is capital, okay? So you have to be very careful when you're giving a name to the class, to the function, to the variables or identifiers. It has to be something which is not a keyword. Now, I hope you all have understood with all these topics. Let's go to the next, that is escape sequence. Uh, in you, Many a time, whenever you want to display something on the screen, you go with system.out.println, okay? Now, this, when you're displaying something, you can use this escape sequence, which helps to display with the something, with the help of where you can control the cursor, okay, on the screen. Uh, remember, uh, let's say I want the tab spacing. Now, me giving manually the tab spacing in my system.out.print, I can use some escape sequence over there. Or let's say I have got n number of uh, things to be displayed. It's more than one letter. So after, for each line, I'll be using one SOP, one on SOP. Or I can take the help of the escape sequence slash n, which it, wherever I give, it will automatically move the next thing to the next line. So I can take the help of the escape sequence for uh, something which has to be displayed in a particular manner. Let's say for tab spacing, uh, next line you want to move. All these things can be used in the uh, system.out.print or to display something on the screen. Here I'll be using five, that is slash t, slash n, single quotes, double quotes, and the backslash sign. Now, uh, when I want to give the spacing for, uh, let's say, a tab spacing, instead of 
manually pressing the space bar for five times or six times or something like that, I can use the slash T where the computer automatically will give me a space after the word. This is known as horizontal tab. The next one slash N where it will see to it that it completes wherever you give slash N, it will move the cursor after that slash n whatever is there will be moved to the next line now the next is single quotes and double quotes now uh, see you write the system dot out of print ln and if you want to display a particular message as it is on the screen you put it in the double quotes but if you print it you see that it does not display the double quotes with it so if i want my particular word to have a double quotes or a single quotes i have to use the backslash sign with it so that the double quotes come to for that particular word let's say if you want to display the book name or something and you want it to be in quotes you can take the help of the escape sequence that is uh, backslash and put the particular sign it is only applicable for single quotes and double quotes same way for the backspace if you want a backspace sign to be displayed if you just give the backspace it will show you an error message but if you use it with a backslash the backspace it will be displayed there would be only a single line so the complete set whatever you are taking the help from the escape sequence is supposed to be enclosed in quotes and should have a backslash with it the slash t horizontal tab see i have given an example over here uh, i have given the word subject colon computer application and i've used a slash t over here now it will give me a space after computer application in case if i'm using more than one tab like here i have used three tab so it will give me the message grade 9 with three tab spacing and after that it will be display let's say this way i hope it's clear this is for slash t the next is slash n that is new line fee as discussed it is used for something which has to be displayed on the next line so instead of giving system dot out dot print ln in the next you can just use the slash n where whatever is there after the slashing would be displayed in the next line. Example, subject computer application and it has got slash n. Now this slash n will help to move grade ninth on the next line. I hope it is clear. The next for single quotes and double quotes. I have in the beginning you can see the subject has got before the sub s it has got a double quotes and in the end it has got a double quotes now these both the quotes are to display in the with the help of the system dot out dot print it won't be you cannot see before s a quote sign but if you want so you can use it with the backslash and display it like for example here i have used subject colon backslash and the quotes so before the c it will display the quotes application and i want only the computer application word to be displayed in quotes so the end part would be displayed at the end of n backslash quotes close so computer application would be coming in double quotes and the same here I have used for grade. Grade, I'm giving it in single quotes. So before G, I'm using the single quote with the help of backslash. And after E, again, I'm using it. So the word grade is going to have the quote sign. Same way if I want backspace. Now I have used here only the backspace one single expecting that it should display but it is showing me an error message over here okay so what we can do 
we are supposed to use one more backspace. The backspace with the sign over there. At that time, the computer will help us, like it will give no syntax error and it will be displayed in this manner. Now, uh, this I hope it's clear with the escape sequence. Okay, now all the escape sequence which we need for grade 9th has been completed.